This is Jordan Schultz from DynastyWorld.com. Welcome to the first edition of the Dynasty Film Room, where I'll be taking a look at Tyler Ulyss today. This uh, will also be available in podcast form if you don't want to stop by and watch the video. Um, so we'll go ahead and just get right into it. So we got Tyler Ulyss we're talking about today. He's a sophomore guard from Kentucky. He weighed in at the combine at a, just under 150 pounds, which is definitely a negative. He's also, you know, 5'10 with shoes, so he's not huge by any means. He's got pretty small hands. They measured in at 7 inches. Uh, for some comparison, Marcus Page, a point guard from North Carolina, he came in at 8 and 3 quarters, so that is quite a bit smaller. Some positives for him physically is he um, weighed, measured in with a 6'2 wingspan, so for a guy his size, that's, that's pretty solid. Um, this past year as a sophomore, he was the SEC Player of the Year and a first-team All-American. He averaged 17 points, 3 rebounds, 7 and assists, 1.5 and steals, 1.5 three-pointers made per game, only turned it over twice per game, and shot 43% from the field and 86% from the free-throw line. He had a 23.9 PER, um, had a 34% assist ratio, which is pretty solid. Um, he had 7.1 win share, then had a 9.6 box score plus minus. So the advanced stats do like him. Uh, the big knock on him is obviously his size, which is, you know, that's a real concern. Uh, but there's been some other guys that have had that same issue that have made it right in the NBA, a la like Kemba Walker, Isaiah Thomas. Um, so let's be looking at him from the offensive side of the ball. His best skill is hands down his handles and his playmaking ability. Uh, when he's in transition, he kind of reminds me of like a Ty Lawson, Kendall Marshall type player when they were at North Carolina. They really did a good job of pushing the ball up the floor and making the right plays. Uh, he's also excellent out of the pick and roll. Very, very accurate passer. Can drop passes through a window like it's nothing. Um, doesn't matter if he's hitting the roll guy, the pop guy, going to the hoop. He, he works well out of the pick and roll. Uh, very, very accurate passer. Um, he's got a very, very good float game, which really saves him being a little shorter, which is, you know, what you got to do when you're smaller. You got to perfect that floater game, which he's done a good job. Uh, I would say he's an average to maybe slightly below above average shooter, if that makes sense. Um, he's got a decent spot up game. He's got good NBA range. He can step back and hit the three point shot. No problem. Um, very, very quick with the ball in his hands. He's got good, quick crossover, spin moves. He covers a lot of ground with his dribbles, uh, like a Damian Lillard, Chris Paul type player where he really gets you know two about two steps in with one big push dribble. Um, he can handle the pressure when he's got the ball in his hands. He's very shifty, very, very unselfish. He's a true floor general in every sense of the word. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, he's got very quick feet and hands. He's very pesky. Um, his anticipation is great, whether he's on the ball going for steals or playing the passing lanes. Um, he should get you some steals in fantasy regardless, so that's what you're really looking for in a dynasty player. Um, overall, you know, he plays with an edge. He's always been a short guy, so it's not like he's going to get to the NBA and all of a sudden be short. He's, he's been short forever, and he's you know, obviously made it this far. So I'm not really too worried about the size. I mean, obviously it's something you have to take into consideration, but I think if he lands in a good spot where he can get minutes, I think he's going to put up fantasy numbers for you. Um, he's you know he's got good NBA skills from a basketball perspective. The only one downside is his size. Uh, if I was him, and I'm sure he's already doing it because he's a very heady player, he should be studying up tape of you know Isaiah Thomas, Kemba Walker, seeing what they've done that has made them successful, and trying to take parts of their game and apply it to him. Um, I mean, he plays with heart. He could fill in and be one of the best backup point guards in the league. I feel pretty confident in saying that if he gets in a good situation. Um, if he continues to perfect his craft and really learn to use his body and his quickness and his shiftiness, he could come and develop into his like a, you know, a, I'd say an average NBA starter on a good NBA team. Uh, regardless, he should put up some good fantasy numbers for you. He's definitely worth a flyer in Dynasty. You're probably not going to have to invest a high first round pick onto him. So if you can get him in the second round or later, I think he's got more upside than a lot of the guys you're going to get at that range in your Dynasty drafts. Um, it could really have an Isaiah Thomas like payoff in a few years. I think he's got that type of upside. You know, he's a motor. He's got a good motor. He's a worker. So that's not too big of an issue. Um, so the one thing about his NBA draft, it's you know he's got a very wide projected range of where he's going to go. I've seen him, you know, getting picked as high as late lottery and then dropping all the way into the second round. If that happens, if he falls in the second round, I think he's going to be the biggest deal of the draft. He's going to be that Isaiah Thomas type player you look back at in a few years and you know like wow that guy was a steal. Um, if that happens, uh, I mean, you're going to feel real excited about that because you're going to be able to get him even later in dynasty drafts, which is awesome. Cause like I said, his upside is higher than a lot of the guys you're going to get outside of the first round. Um, a couple interesting fits for him that I think fall in that draft range or where he's projected would be if you, you know, fell to Chicago, 
Obviously, Derrick Rose, is, he's on his contract here this year, so he could be a good backup for them and eventually take over that role. He's from Chicago, so that kind of seems like a, a decent fit. I haven't really heard much rumbling about them taking him. Most of uh, the news reports out there are more from the news journalists than from like, you know, like a team release or things you hear around the team that they're really interested in, in him. Uh, some other fits that I think are interesting would be Memphis. Obviously, Mike Conley is a free agent, so there could be a new, brand new point guard there, and that could be a good spot for him to step in and take that. Um, if Mark Gasol is healthy, that's he's got some good weapons surrounding him. Uh, a couple other teams that I like that are a little bit later in the first round are Indy. Uh, obviously, George Hill is going to be the starter there, but I think he could really come in and be a good ball handler off the bench and really hand out some assists. Um, Atlanta is interesting. Jeff Teague's going to expire after next year. You've already heard a lot of talk about him potentially being traded, so that could happen. And then the last team that I think it would be a good fit for him would be uh, Philadelphia 76ers. They have you know a late first round pick, no point guards on the team. They got the second or the excuse me the first overall pick. If I was them, I would take Simmons and then give a guy like Ulysses a hard look when they come back around at the end of the first round to really round out their squad. But yeah, so my overall thing on Ulysses is you know he's going to be a good player. I, I I feel confident saying he's going to be a good player. Regardless, he should put up fantasy numbers for you. He should be able to turn into a guy that's a decent score. I think his scoring could dip a little bit in the NBA compared to where it was in college. I could actually see his assists, you know, stepping up a little bit more and uh, going up a little higher with time. He should be able to get you, you know, one, one and a half steals, knock down a three-pointer per game. Uh, excellent free throw shooter. You, the one thing I worry about him is that he could shoot kind of a lower field goal percentage. He wasn't a high percentage player in college by any means, but I think he's got enough upside that he could turn into a player that you could overlook that. Uh, he did a good job taking care of the ball, only had two turnovers per game. So I think he could very much turn into an Isaiah-type player with maybe not as much offensive chops, but I think he could be an even better playmaker.